Yeah, certainly. We're excited about this camp. I think there's a, a large number of guys returning that are going to contribute uh, a lot more than they did last year. I think there's a, uh, I think there's about uh, about 12, 13 guys that had quality experience last year that will be returning, and then we're going to add a number of junior college guys, um, in addition to some high school guys that may. Uh, that may change kind of the face of our offense, which is really, really exciting just because this spring uh, we had a phenomenal opportunity to kind of test some things out and kind of go in some different directions than we have in years past. And certainly you can see uh, the talent that we've added has changed kind of the face of what we do on offense. So I'm really, really excited about these guys that are coming in and the guys that are returning uh, this year. I guess specifically, what, what are some of the positions that could really take a big step forward this year with some of the new additions? Certainly the, uh, the running back group. You know, there's some new faces in that room, certainly that are going to come in and hopefully uh, provide that, that extra burst of, um, of explosiveness you know, each game. You know, last year we had a lot of explosive plays from the running back position, but there were a number of times that you know, those runs could have gone further. And so we brought in some guys that – that have that skill set to take those 10, 15 yard gains, take them to distance. So I'm really, really excited about uh, that group. In addition to the tight end group, I think we got some guys there that certainly can stretch the field and add some more physicality to our run game. And so those two groups right there are going to, you know, they're going to look totally different than they have these past two seasons. Each game is different, but it, the past two years with you, plays per game has gone up. I think last year averaged about 74, 76. Do you have a number in mind that you want to average through the year per each game that you want to get to? Uh, so that way, you know, whatever scheme you're running, whether it's up-tempo or try to slow it down, that you want to get to in a game to get the, you know, get those reps in? I'd say uh, I'd like to get as many plays as possible, certainly. But each game, you know, it's kind of a different uh, – it takes on a different life of its own. And so if we can average right around that 75 to 80 per game, I would love to live in that world. Um, but obviously that's going to be flexible depending on uh, the type of opponent that we play offensively and defensively um, and kind of where we're at in terms of uh, health-wise. You know, those are things that are really, really flexible throughout the season. Coach, schedule-wise, how does it compare to um, recent years? Well, it's different. You know, we're kind of picking fights with uh, – with people from all over the country. I mean, every single week we're going to be uh, somewhere new or taking on an opponent that's not familiar. And uh, for us, you know, that's exciting just because it's some new faces. It's not, uh, you know, your traditional Big South uh, opponents. And so I know our guys are fired up and excited about the opportunity to, to play, you know, up and down, left to right, you know, coast to coast. And uh, it's a phenomenal challenge that, you know, we're excited for. Joe, we've asked you the last couple of years about the progression of Buckshot Calvert. Where is he now in year three, and what were the offseason steps for him to improve on? And certainly, uh, the young man that showed up here two years ago is not the same guy that, that stands before us today. Uh, he's a guy that's put in some, uh, some long hours uh, on the practice field and in a weight room to increase uh, you know, his mental and physical skill sets. And every fall and every spring, you know, he uh, seems to get better in a certain aspect of his uh, of his game, then which allows us to expand our offense and some of the things that we do mentally uh, throughout the season. And so, you know, this is year three for for Buckshot, and uh, I'm excited to see what he you know what he puts out there because it's going to be totally different than it was in years past, in my opinion, in terms of productivity. You know, he's going to spray the football all over the field. There's going to be guys that, uh, you know, like last year where they wouldn't cover him due to the fact that you know, he was far left to the field and no one was ever going to throw that ball. And he did it a number of times. You know, that's always going to be on the table now going into each, each game just because the kid can make those throws. And that forces you to cover all 53 and a third. Last year with so much tape uh, on the passing game, especially the explosiveness, like you mentioned with Buckshot, What's the onus going to be on the running game to really get established this year and take take a lot of pressure off that passing game by being able to convert first downs, extend drives, and uh, be a reliable facet in the offense? Yeah, certainly. We uh, we were in advantageous uh, formations and down distances last year in the run game. You know, there'd be just times where 
you know, we wouldn't hit the hole the way we needed to. And when we decided to get back to that cut, it was too late. The defense has already out leveraged us. And so, you know, a five, six yard gain turned into a two or three because we were late getting to our leverage. And so an onus is going to be put specific on hitting, you know, your landmarks with your eyes and your body and then accelerating uh, through the hole, not just to the hole. And hopefully throughout fall camp, we can see the progression of our guys in that backfield, you know, go from those two or three yard gains, five, six yard games to 10, 15, 20, even more because they're more disciplined in their course running. Coach, when you look at the backup quarterback position, obviously just a snap away from having to be out there on the field, uh, what do you feel that you have in uh, some of those guys behind Buckshot and Mason Cunningham, Lane Brown, uh, maybe in Pop Robinson, the, the new guy coming in? Yeah, those guys all bring to, to the table something different. Um, those guys have some unique athletic abilities. Those guys can carry the football. Certainly they have those uh, skill sets. Uh, Mason's played, um, you know, he's played a little bit in, in his career. He has some junior college experience, and last year he got into uh, a game or two. And so he's played on, you know, on the collegiate level before. And he's a guy that has uh, phenomenal leadership skills. He's a guy that rallies the troops and gets guys together. Um, not afraid to work uh, more than the required hours. He'll put in the time needed in order to get better and help others get better. So he's a young man that I'm excited about. You know, when his opportunity comes, when he gets in, I feel like he's going to come through and, and make the plays he needs to. Landon Brown's a guy who redshirted last year, had phenomenal experience traveling to each game, getting a feel for what it's like on a daily basis to, you know, to be a quarterback uh, at this level. And he's a guy that throughout spring did a really good job of comprehending some of the new things that we've added to our offense. And I'm looking forward to see where he's grown since April. And then uh, Brandon Pop Robinson's a young man that you know, has a really, really bright future. He's a guy that was, you know, kind of raw, under-recruited, coming out of high school, but he has a huge ceiling. You know, he's a coach's kid. Uh, he's a really, really high academic kid as well. And he's not afraid to work. That young man will put in the time uh, to uh, develop the mental and physical skills needed. So. This group of quarterbacks that I have coming uh, to camp this year is, is really, really talented. And it's going to be exciting just to see these guys grow after 20, you know, 30 days of camp. Coach mentioned with trying to get Buckshot out of his comfort zone a little bit, talk a little bit more, be more of a leader. What are those conversations like with, with you and him? Maybe not the specifics, but just relaying how important that is to him and how have you seen him grow? Yeah, certainly. I or we don't try to force him to do anything that's uh, too uncomfortable, but we try to illustrate to him the importance of being vocal in certain situations, you know, kind of create teachable moments for him so that once he uh, experiences that moment once again, he's able to provide, you know, some brief, you know, tidbits of uh, leadership, um, some relational things that allow guys to, uh, to trust him even further and then believe in him even further because, you know, you, you can't be who you're not, obviously. You can't fake or be phony with guys because they're your teammates, they know. And so he's not a guy that you're going to see be phony. Seeing him come up here and, and, you know, talk your brains out is not what he's going to do. And I, he doesn't do that with his teammates either. So we're not expecting that of him. We're not forcing that of him. But we are just trying to give him an opportunity to, uh, to you know, demonstrate leadership in unique ways so that uh, he understands – the importance of those things, and obviously, you know, it rallies guys uh, when he does speak up. Even without Cephas Reddick coming back, the wide receiver room's relatively loaded with talent. Is that one of the deepest positions that you have on the offensive side? Yeah, certainly. There's a number of guys that played a lot of snaps in that room, and then there's guys that we're bringing in uh, as well that are really, really talented. Some guys that are red-shirted last year that are going to, you know, play a big factor in what we do this year, and then there's couple guys that we just brought in as well that are going to do some things for us that we haven't done in years past. So that group has uh, only gotten better because of time and then the additions of some new guys. Coach, last year at this time you were talking about the situational football was huge on your list as well as enhancing you know, the football IQ. What are one or two things you're you know, emphasizing with the offense this year? Yeah, situational awareness. I think uh, if we're aware at all times what the objective is in this situation, then we have a better understanding of what needs to get achieved prior to the snap. You know, so as you get down in your stance, you glance over the sidelines, you can see what the markers are, what the down and distance is. Um, 
ball security things, things of, uh, of the nature of where, how I put the football in my hand when I'm running down the field. Do I put it on my inside arm or my outside arm? When I'm taking on a, a tackling defender, where is he coming from? A low position or a high position? Um, worst case scenario situations, say we throw a pick or it's a turnover of some sort. Who are the worst ball carriers on the field? The defensive guys. So how do we get the football out of their hands? We work on uh, club and pull and ripping. You know, we're, we want to be aware situationally at all times. We need to be able to have uh, the right train of thought in the event of something great happening or in the event of something bad happening. You know, and so situational awareness is really what we're working on uh, as an offense um, in, in this fall camp. We're really, really going to uh, pay a lot of attention to that. I just wonder if uh, you mentioned with uh, Buckshot's growth and just the overall growth of you know the football IQ and everything on, on the offense. Are you expanding your your play calling any this year, or are you just trying to hone in on doing what you already did a little bit better? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I may be a young play caller in the sense it's my third season doing so, um, but I'm the son of a football coach. I grew I've grown up in this business. This is what I know. This is what I know. God's called me to do, and I'm looking to grow. I'm constantly evaluating my tendencies. I'm studying other offensive coordinators and what they're doing uh, because I have to grow. You know, and this spring was awesome for us because we expanded what we did on offense and it forced me to kind of change how I think, you know. And I'm excited to kind of see, you know, how it all unfolds this season at the end of the year, see where we're at and what we've been able to do um, just because of the changes of our offense. Last year, the tight ends didn't have a big role in the uh, passing game. Uh, you know, a lot of guys coming back there, and plus the addition of Chris Barrett. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, envision that uh, their role changing at all? Maybe more reps in the passing game, and then if you could just speak specifically about Barrett, what he brings to the team. Yeah, certainly that group was young last season in terms of the depth. I think we had uh, Zach Fouts and um, Thomas Kennedy were the you know the two primary guys that played a lot at that position. And now we've got a litany of guys that are going to be on display for us. Um, and so that, that group, we have to get way more production out of that group than we have in years past. And we definitely have the talent to do so. We got Fidel, who is a long, lean, fast kid, who's really strong, really stout. We got Jerome Jackson, who redshirted last year. Phenomenal inline blocking tight end. And then the addition of uh, Chris Barrett, you know, he's a guy that's played some football. This is his third college. He's had experience. You know, this stage is not going to be too big for him, you know. And he has a unique skill set in the fact that he can be on the line. He can be detached. Um, and then you had Mason Yost, a freshman in from uh, Jacksonville, Florida, who has very similar skill sets to Jerome Jackson. And so that group got instantly better overnight, you know, once we uh, – once we had signing day and once we transitioned to the 2018 season. Going back to the wide receiver uh, with the competition there, how many you plan on carrying during the season and how many do you want to see in the rotation? And does that make the battle for those spots that much, uh, that much more challenging? Yeah, it varies. I'd like to be three deep at each position if I could be. Um, but that's subject to change due to injuries, due to development, to see if guys are mentally and physically ready to perform at this level. We know who the primary guys are because they had a lot of touches last year, but there's some new guys that are coming to the, uh, to the mix that we're not quite sure of. And so, you know, that exact number is, you know, is going to change once we, uh, once we look at, you know, um, where they're at at the uh, conclusion of fall camp. Uh, offensive line, uh, we haven't talked much about that position. Uh, obviously, can't move the ball without them. We've got a lot of guys returning. Um, what is your prognosis for them? Also, a lot of newcomers, you know, freshmen. Do you envision mm -hmm. any of them being able to crack the low rotation? Yeah, I feel really, really strong about where we're at up front. Coach Sam's done a phenomenal job of developing those guys, and there's a lot of experience in that room. And you know, there's about eight, nine guys that have played ball in that in that group, and so. Going into the season, you're like, hey, this is one of our strongest position groups because those guys have had a lot of experience. They have a lot of reps underneath their belt in addition to the fact that they got another two seasons, some of those guys three seasons to play for us. So with that being said, that group is really, really strong. 
I mean, we did a phenomenal job of recruiting guys as well. We, we added five big bodies in there. And uh, who knows? I, I really don't know where, you know, where they're going to be at the end of training camp. I'd like for those guys to be ready. Um, but there's a lot of time between now, you know, in the first ball game, anything can happen.